All right, guys, today we're gonna take a deep dive into the brand new WAN Reward Loras, specifically the HPS2 and the MPS. I've been testing them out over the last couple of days, and honestly, the results have been really impressive. I'll walk you through a few examples that I've created so far, and we'll break down how these work with both high noise and low noise settings on the WAN 14B model. Now, before we jump into the workflow, let me quickly show you where you can access these models. Everything is hosted on Hugging Face. I'll leave the download links in the description below so you can check them out yourself. You can either grab the regular versions or the resized Kajaya versions, depending on what works best for your setup. There's also an official version released by Alibaba, which is worth trying out too. Definitely check out the Hugging Face page because they've included extra details, examples, and documentation that might be useful. Okay, let's get into the workflow itself. Here's the base image that we'll be working with. We'll start with the MPS LoRa. In this example, I'm combining it with the Litex LoRa, and I'll show you results. For the low noise run, we get a very clean and stable video. Everything looks ultra smooth and realistic adds a bit more cinematic style and dynamic movement, but it still holds together really well. Here's a quick breakdown of the setup. We're using block swap. Prompts are tailored for cinematic, ultra-realistic vacation scenes. For example, standing in a location with cinematic ultra-realism. I've also included a negative prompt to keep things clean and avoid unwanted artifacts. Both sampler nodes are running with H-Shift and DPM++ SDE for consistency. Now, let's take a look at the outputs. The first example was generated with 16 frames, which already looks good, but just to push it further, I also rendered the same setup at 21 frames. The difference is subtle, but you'll notice smoother motion and a more cinematic feel. Again, I'll show you both side by side so you can compare. Now let me save this workflow and we'll try out a couple of different images to really see how versatile this setup can be. This next image was actually generated in one of my previous videos. So if you've been following along, you might recognize it. For now, I'll stick with the MPS LoRa and use the same prompts, just so we can clearly see how the LoRa adapts across different inputs. Now let's step it up with something more complex. Here's a prompt I tested. Industrial greenish armored alien. A man in a dark jacket aiming and firing a handgun at the alien. Bloodshot eyes. The bullet strikes the alien producing realistic spark and ricochet effects. The alien gets hurt and spits out a stream of green acid, forcing him to drop the gun slowly. I've attached the enhanced node in both samplers here, which really boosts the pixel details. And here's the result looks pretty solid. In this run, the gun didn't exactly drop as I wrote in the prompt, but the overall animation still came out very good. If I rerun it with a different seed, it'll eventually follow that detail. This is the exact same prompt setup, but now rendered into a video. I also added an upscaler to enhance the pixels even further. If you're running on lower VRAM, you can simply delete those nodes. For reference, I'm using an RTX 4090 for these examples, but the workflow is flexible enough to run on smaller GPUs too. Next, let's switch over to the HPS2 LoRa. Here's the same alien prompt, but with HPS2 instead of MPS. The results here were interesting. I feel like HPS2 interprets prompts a little better in some cases. In this example, the preview, which is a nice touch. Now, let's try another example with a different image. For this one, I use the following prompt. A chilling, hyper-realistic scene, corridor, wall behind, a gruesome gray figure pursues in chaotic motion. You can pause the video and read the full prompt if you'd like. With WAN, you really need to emphasize the key actions you want in your prompt. Otherwise, it may improvise. For this example, I used UniPC as the sampler. The result came out quite good, although the character first moved backwards before coming forward again. I didn't write that in the prompt, 
but you can fix little issues like this by tweaking the seed and rerunning the workflow. So overall, both MPS and HPS to reward LoRa's are powerful in different ways. MPS gives strong cinematic realism, while HPS2 seems to interpret prompts with a bit more creativity. Together, they open up a lot of fun possibilities for WAN 14B in Comfy UI. That's it for today's video. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me keep creating more tutorials and experiments like this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.